Welcome back to TYT Sports, Jason. And if you've seen him on TYT Politics, the Young Turks own Jordan Cheriton. What is he doing on sports? He gets to play a very fun game of uh, how to fix the Knicks. And I was just telling him before the show started, uh, we've had a couple people come on this this platform to discuss how to fix the Knicks. Uh, I'm going to lob this one right up to you because I know it starts with a lot of things. Let's start at the top and work our way down. Phil Jackson is still uh, discussed in New York sports media and in the uh, mainstream to this day as we don't know what to do with him as a GM. We don't know how to treat him as a coach. What does he want to do? Do you want him here? Do you want him not? Is this all on Phil? Do we move forward from Phil? How do we fix the management problem before we get to the mellow and the Porzingis and Derrick Rose? Well, I just want to tell the audience, you know, when I'm around the country for TYT politics, mm. that's youtube.com slash TYT politics. <laughs> In addition to the misery, the injustice, the corruption, I have to go watch every night the Knicks losing to the Nets or the Bucks or just the worst of the worst, and then reading stories about the triangle. So it's been a very tough emotional state for me. Uh, starting with Phil, listen, bottom line, Phil Jackson, the only reason he should be here is either A, he's coaching, mm -hmm. or B, can draw in free agents. Kevin Durant would not meet with us. Other free agents would not meet with us. You know, Pat Riley, he threw out his rings to LeBron James. I mean, having Dwayne Wade and these folks helped, um, but that's, that's not even carrying weight. So uh, to me, it's either... You do one of those things, you draw on free agents, you coach, or leave. Yeah. I mean, Phil Jackson doesn't need this money. He wants the money. <laughs> because you need, I would rather a younger, uh, you know, novice GM that's more creative, uh, not as stubborn, set in his ways, than someone who's obsessed with the triangle, uh, you know, using his Twitter as some type of subtle coded jabs at his stars. So I think it starts with the culture. And Phil Jackson, he's not open to other ideas or uh, other, you know, Steve Mills under him might as well just be carrying his bags. So uh, I think either Phil Jackson has to coach the team, which would be great because there's young, talented uh, uh, players, or you got to bring in some free agents because obviously the trades he's been making isn't working out. I see a lot of similarities between Phil Jackson and Donald Trump. Yeah. <laughs> I've made this point a couple of times. They both like to subtweet about superstars mm -hmm. and uh, I guess political superstars in the way for Trump. And, and everyone knows this. I'm not the most politically inclined uh, uh, speaker, but when it comes to uh, Phil Jackson and Trump, I mean, he's one bad hair piece away. And, and they both love to create hysteria. They both live in New York mm -hmm. and uh, want to uh, find sexual partners in LA. Yep. <laughs> Jeannie Buss in this case. <laughs> right. There's a chance that Jeannie Buss is also with Trump. We don't know. Sorry, yeah. Jeannie. You know, I actually mm -hmm. like that one of the Buss family. A whole nother mess is, it's not just the Knicks, by the way. The, the meccas of basketball are just falling apart. Chicago, New York. LA. Uh, LA. And uh, Boston, fortunately, still standing strong. And... Um, Again, I've always made this point, Philadelphia rising back up, or at least more promising. One of the clips we did before the season started, uh, one of my favorite conversations was, which team is most poised and ready to make a run in like the next five years? And believe it or not, it's the Philadelphia 76ers. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those things where they say, like, oh, Sam Hinkie died for your sins, Sam Hinkie trust the process, all these things. Now, with the Knicks, it seemed like we were making the right Move like so. Phil Jackson's one of two good general manager decisions: draft Kristaps Porzingis. Mm -hmm. Screw what everyone else is saying. All the Knicks fans at the time, for the most part, said no. Bring us Justice Winslow. We just mm -hmm. watched him dominate the tournament. A strong wing, good piece to a team. Nothing against Justice Winslow. Still one of my favorite players to uh, to keep an eye on in terms of young sophomores getting better. But in Porzingis's case, we got a, a freak of nature who yeah. you can build around. You can actually make him what Patrick Ewing did right. for us. The other big thing is, as you mentioned, these free agent signings. Why go out and get Derrick Rose? Why go out and get Courtney Lee, who wasn't necessarily a bad signing? Brandon Jennings, which is a clear-cut example, and there's still no accountability mm -hmm. in the end. Where has Phil Jackson ever said, nor would it make me even feel any better at this point, messed up on Brandon Jennings. We need to figure out how to get rid of Rose. Mm -hmm. Anybody who ex expected, I thought 500 in the eighth seed. That was my actual expectation, which would have been great. We so underachieved as an organization, it's remarkable. So in terms of going forward, you can't re-sign Rose. How do you deal with a guy like Joe Kim Noah on the books for $75 million? Well, first of all, look at all the perennial titans of the NBA. Mm -hmm. Golden State, yep. Cleveland, 
um, now Boston, yep. uh, Oklahoma City. How did they become competitors? Very high draft picks. Yes. They stunk for a long time. Mm -hmm. The New York Knicks never allow themselves just to hit rock bottom like the Sixers, who I think had like one of the worst NBA records in, no, for, uh, of won, history. I think 26 games over, I feel, I was like, it was about 35 games over three years. It was, you're talking yeah, yeah. like 10, yeah. 12, 13 wins. So seasons. it was miserable for a while. Yes. But you know what? Uh, people confuse New York as not accepting that, and you can't do right. that in New York. I disagree. I think what the, the fans have the biggest problem with is this kind of, uh, you know, near 500, uh, right. maybe we're fighting for the eighth seed. No, let's stink for a while. So I wasn't for re-signing Carmelo Anthony, no, but, true. you know, I was not for uh, the Derrick Rose trade, all these things that were kind of moved us from uh, a total rebuild to kind of retooling this year. And also, not not only that, that Joakim Noah a deal was bad, but it shows you Phil Jackson's inexperience. He just, he's, I think he was 30, 31, just had a major knee injury yes. last year. And as a general manager, you need to know when somebody's kind of out of his prime, because sometimes you hit a wall, even if it's at 30 in the NBA, where one injury leads to three more, and that's what happened. So look, that's all in the rear view. Going forward, I mean, honestly, you're gonna have to take like 25, 50 cents on the dollar for a lot of these players. Yeah, uh, Derek 50, Rose, 50 would be a miracle. Derek Rose, I wouldn't resign him because honestly, watching Derek Rose this year, it looks like he is trying, trying to stay healthy rather than be explosive. Yes, I, I see hesitation because he's going for a free agent contract and wants to show he could play 75 to 80% so. of the year. Of course. Uh, Courtney Lee, he's, he's a good piece. I see him more as a bench player. I would try to tr trade him if I can. Uh, honestly, I would, it's not popular to say, tank the rest of this season. Sit Carmelo Anthony. And it's not just this season. You gotta tank next season. Yeah. You gotta tank the season after that. Because even if you get, even if you get, let's say they get the number four or five pick. Is that gonna pairing him with KP next year and Melo? It's not gonna catapult them to the. No, you're right about that too. A lot of people kind of sit there and they go like, "Well, what if you get Alonzo Ball or Markel Fultz, a game-changing player?" It's like, well, they're not game-changing. Like, look how many players, for example, were LeBron James or was it Kevin Garnett when they came out of high school? Right. That just immediately stepped onto the floor and the team was at least 35 wins just right. because of that one player. Right. There's nobody in the draft right now that you can put on the Knicks itself. You can give him Lonzo Ball and Markel Fultz. Give him the one and two pick. Mm -hmm. And as long as the system's in place, it's not going to work. The point you're making is actually very sound because it's the fact that we it, winning 30 games will n neither help us. It actually makes us worse to go forward. You have to just throw in the towel. And the craziest part about that is let's say you throw in the towel and you find a way to get rid of Melo in the offseason and Derrick Rose. And all you have left is Porzingis just on that team and a bunch of scrubs. Right, but you tell Porzingis, you're the future, we're gonna build around you, stick with us, which he would, he's a good rookie contract. You're still gonna fill the seats of the garden because you have a freak special player that is entertaining ripping blocks from players' hands without even having to jump. So you have somebody you can fill the seats, you can have somebody you can sell jerseys for and just say, give us 18 months. And you have a plan, that's the key. They don't have a right. plan right now, what's their plan? Because uh, if gonna... not, Porzingis is gonna say in two years, why the hell would I stay in New York? Right, and also, by the way, just forgetting win winning for a second, mm. just pride, <laughs> get a defensive player or two, because I cannot watch yeah. anymore. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's like I could, I could play center for the Knicks and play better. It's, it's unbelievable. I want, Don't I, let this fool you, she's right. seven two. I want, a, I want the Avery Bradleys of the world from Boston. Oh, I want Sh all of the Boston. Sh 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 <laughs> uh, Shumpert is still a good defensive stopper. I think Phil, thinks, let me just get players that on paper look good and used to be really good and maybe they'll kind of reflourish mm. uh, and the triangle will solve all. Well, the triangle was awesome because you had Michael Jordan and Dennis Rodman and Scotty Pippen, and okay? Kobe Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal and Robert Ori Rick right. Fox. And, it, and it's kind of like in politics, it's very difficult to rewire the mind of a dinosaur. Not, sorry to offend our senior voters, uh, <laughs> you're, not, you're not viewers. Not all dinosaurs, but Phil Jackson is entrenched in his way of thinking. So if you're not getting me Kevin Durant, if you're not getting me uh, DeAndre Jordan or whoever the premier free agent, what good are you? Yeah. Uh, I would like to see them uh, tank for two years. And by the way, sometimes in tanking, it's not just the draft picks, but uh, there's a foundation that's built. The players you have, uh, that's how you, you build could, a championship you core. Yeah, you might also find, because uh, you're giving a lot of players minutes that wouldn't necessarily get starting minutes on any of their team. It's actually happened with the Nets a couple of times. Uh, 
with guys like Jarrett Jack, who, you know, had a decent season. And they can put together wins, and there's some good moments that come out of that. It's well, just remarkable. One smaller thing, and, mm -hmm. you know, people tell me, oh, Jordan, stop it. When's the last time the Knicks were uh, really good for a consecutive period of time? Jeremy Lin, because they had a point guard. I know he's, he's not so great now, but they had a freak of nature. Maybe it was a fluke. Uh, they went on a big winning streak. He was getting everyone yeah, else you're involved. Like a two week consistency period of good play because, like, for, you have to go back. Besides the 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 J.R. Smith Six Man of the Year sixty six game season that was short and that started on Christmas, I think we were the two seed uh, where we lost to the Pacers, of course, in the playoffs. Uh, it was the nineties. It was Patrick Ewing, and you mentioned this point, and a lot of people keep forgetting this. The Knicks' success was defensive success. They were never, in their prime, making the finals against the Spurs those years, they were never an offensive talent. Charles they were Oakley. defensive-minded, bruisers, strong, physical, Memphis Grizzlies style of mm -hmm. play basketball. And we need to go back to that. And Joe Kim Noah would have been great for that in 2008. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, five years ago. Yeah. So. All right, Jordan, thanks for joining me, man. Yep. Anytime you need to uh, you know, vent about Knicks basketball, please. I can't take it. Yep. <laughs> It's good for your soul, though. It you is. It is. You need this. Uh, at Jordan Cheriton on Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, TYT Politics on Facebook and on uh, YouTube. Go check it out. Rising Channel. 200,000 subs yet? 150. But uh, thank you for the, for the race. Of course. Of course. See you next time, guys.